had quite a dramatic event happen in our house about a month ago. It was a Saturday. I was at home lunchtime. My wife was out in the car doing some shopping. I'm sitting at home and suddenly the phone buzzes and I check the message and there's two messages, one I'd missed. One was from my sister and another one from my daughter. Both said, James, are you okay? Did you know about the fire? And there was a little link my sister had sent, which was from the fire department to indicate that there was this very large fire burning east of Mandra. Well, I went outside and had a look and there's a lot of smoke in the air. It was all coming from the east, but it didn't seem to be a threat to where we were living. I go back inside. I sent a message to both my daughter and my sister to say, yep, no, I think we're okay. And then the phone rings. I go and pick up the phone and it was the fire emergency services. And they said, you need to leave your home now. Everyone in our suburb got this same phone call to exit. So I'm sitting there. I had no car to exit with because my wife is out. Thankfully, she arrives within 10 minutes. She comes in. I tell her what's happened. I said, we've got a phone call. We have to leave right now. So we now look at our house and we have to decide in two minutes what is the most important thing for us to take. It was like one of those moments where you're going through your day, you're just traveling through life, you're not thinking about this whatsoever, you haven't set up your list, but right then and there you have to make a decision. And what we did decide, of course, was to take each other in the car and our pet dog Cujo and our wallet with our ID and cards in it. That was it. And we drove off. And for the next three hours, everyone in our suburb had to leave and be on the other side of Mandra until we got the all clear to return back. But there's that moment, an unexpected moment where suddenly we had to make a decision about what really was the most important thing to us. Now, the story that Jesus tells in Matthew 13 is known as the parable of the pearl. It's about a merchant who's traveling through his land, looking around at different goods that he's buying and selling, and suddenly comes to this particular marketplace. And there's a seller who has in one of these trays a single pearl. The merchant picks up the pearl to look at it and he realizes it's the most magnificent, valuable thing he's ever seen. He desperately wants this pearl. He asks for the seller, what is the price for the pearl? And the the seller says, well, it's going to cost this amount. It's this huge amount, which effectively means the merchant has to give up everything he's got to get this particular pearl. And he willingly does so because to him, The pearl is worth more than anything else he has accumulated in his life. It's a a parable about a treasure. And the parable is ultimately asking us, what for you right now is the most valuable thing in your life? In Mark chapter 12, Jesus is in a discussion with a group of people and he indicates to them what are the two most important things in this world. Now, one of the things he says, I think most people agree with in this world, it's people. If you were in a situation where you had to pick and choose between everything you've got and people who are close to you, you would choose people over those things. But then Jesus adds one more thing is, he says it's also God. People and God. But God's presence in your life is more important than people. The parable of the pearl, on one hand, is a treasure that it focuses on, but there actually are two treasures here. The parable of the pearl carries with it two different interpretations in the Christian community. One of the interpretations is probably the more popular one, where the merchant represents people, people in life who are on a journey through life, and then they stumble across the kingdom of God. They stumble across Christ who embodies everything about God and about the kingdom. And once they have found Christ, they decide that this is the person they want to pursue in their life. His teachings, his outlook, his presence. And so therefore, everything that is holding them back from having that, they are prepared to give away. Christ, therefore, is the treasure But the second interpretation in Christian circles has a bit of a different take on it. The merchant is Christ. It is Christ who is going through this world looking for lost people. The lost people to him are the treasure. 
And when Christ discovers the lost people, he goes to the cross and he gives everything up to bring those people back into his presence. That's the two interpretations. One interpretation has Christ being the treasure and the second interpretation has people being the treasure. And when you go right back to that saying where Christ says there are two things in this world that are important. One are people, but the second is God. It seems like you've got two different interpretations, but in fact, both interpretations are still coming to the exact same treasure. And here's why. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, he says a question. Do you not realize about yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? That when someone pursues the kingdom of God, when they pursue Christ, Christ enters into that person. That person becomes a new creation with Jesus Christ present with them through the presence of the Holy Spirit. The person becomes a new creation and a new person in Christ. Therefore, if Christ dwells within them, the treasure that they have been pursuing is now in them as well. And the important part about the, the parable of the pearl is because it points to something that often is amiss within Christians. It's self-esteem. Self-esteem is done, we do a lot of work of that in the schoolwork I've worked in the past and in education, trying to build up people's self-esteem. But Paul's question is really profound for people who are followers of Christ. People who have pursued that treasure of the kingdom of God, have found that treasure, and now Christ dwells within them. If Christ is the treasure then how much more valuable are you because Christ, the creator of everything, dwells within you? And secondly, if Christ is pursuing the treasure and the treasure is in fact you, then how much more valuable are you because the creator of the universe pursues you above all things? It's here the two interpretations touch and form into one treasure. The question that you need to answer, do you not realize about yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? If that is what you believe, then how much do you really think you are worth in this world? It is simply beyond all measure.